What's up guys, Quinn here. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to create something like this in After Effects. I call it like a looping tracking effect, which you can do on pretty much any consistently moving subject. I've seen it done by quite a few creators. It almost looks like it's giving you some sort of 3D look slash effect, which I like, and it's actually pretty easy to do. So without further ado, let's hop into After Effects. What do you have to say for yourself? Okay, so here is a stock footage clip I pulled of a car drifting along the road. You're gonna wanna make sure your clip starts and ends with the subject facing the same direction slash angle. This is what will give us a seamless loop. So you can see the car is angled this way and we'll start our clip here. And then once it drifts back into that same angle, we'll end it here. Let's start by going over to the tracker panel and clicking stabilize motion. Drag our track point onto the subject. And under analyze, click this forward arrow. This is gonna track our subject so that it'll be locked onto the center of the frame for the whole duration. Under my composition window, I will toggle on this title action safe grid. That's gonna show us where the center point of the frame is. I'll align my subject to that center point. Now the car will be tracked dead center the whole time. I'll right click and pre-compose this clip. Select move all into a new composition. This way we won't mess with all the tracking data and we'll just keep everything cleaner. From here, we'll create the animated shape that will be moving around the subject. So we could draw a mask directly on the clip and animate it using keyframes, but I found it to be difficult to generally animate and move the shape as a whole. So instead, with nothing selected, go up to our rectangle tool and draw any shape you'd like around the car. Move this shape layer below the main clip. And on the main clip, go over to track mat. If you don't see track mat, you'll right click on this bar over here and under columns, check modes. Then on the drop down, select the shape layer. So now the shape that you just drew is acting as the mask. I kind of want to start it with a square shape pretty small. And I kind of want the car to fill out most of the frame in the beginning so we can match it up nicely later on for the loop. To do this, I will select our main clip and under transform, add a keyframe for scale and drag this up. So now we have some nice proportions to start this edit out. Then I'm gonna animate my shape layer under transform. I'll add a keyframe at the beginning to lock this shape in, drag my playhead forward, and this is where you can get as creative as you'd like. I'm gonna widen this shape layer out to reveal some more of the environment. And at the same time, I'll also scale down my car shot as the shape layer widens to add movement. So I'll put in a keyframe for that. Maybe throw in some rotation keyframes for my shape layer. And now as you can see, it starts to come a bit more alive. And if you're brand new to After Effects and you don't know much about keyframing, I'd recommend watching some in-depth tutorials on keyframing so you can really get creative with this. Since we are looping this on my car clip, I'm going to copy my scale keyframe from the beginning and paste it onto the end so that the size of the car itself will line up perfectly. I'll do the same with my shape layer too. And to make all these animations smoother, I'm going to highlight all the keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Then we also want to toggle on motion blur for both clips under this icon here. And I'm interrupting you because I love to interrupt and also plug myself. If you didn't know, I have a paper assets pack. You see a lot of these elements in this very tutorial right now. A lot of textures, overlays, transitions. So feel free to check it out. With our main animation done, I will select both layers, right click and pre-compose them. Now it's time to create the loop. I'll duplicate our newly pre-composed layer by selecting it and clicking Command-D. I'll drag our top layer over to the end of the clip under it to have it slightly overlap. Then at the end of the bottom clip, we'll add keyframes to the top clip to lock this position in. Drag the playhead to the start of the top clip 
and move the position all the way out of the frame so that way it'll slide in like this. And to polish everything up a bit, we can add a drop shadow under effects, drag that onto our top clip, adjust it however you'd like, and we kind of get this cool 3D look. Quickly gonna add a white background so we can see this all better, and I will also add a drop shadow to our bottom clip. And here is the final result. Now, how to make it seamlessly loop is just gonna be playing around with our in and out points. So right here, when that top clip lands in, that'll be where we drag our out point to. And we wanna match up this frame right here with the same opening frame in the beginning. And we'll make that our in point, so where the clip starts. So once we play it through, you can see that it loops. And to make it perfect, you might need to adjust it a little bit with the in and out points. And here is the final effect. I went ahead and tried this on a few more stock clips. So I did one where the camera is not tracking the subject and it's just kind of a still overhead shot and it works on that. And then I also did one on a runner where also the camera is tracking the subject and it worked on that as well. So it seems like you can use this on pretty much any moving subject as long as the shape of your subject and angle of it line up pretty well. And that is how we accomplish this looping tracking, masking, some more ings, more thing ings, inging thing effect. And I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.